Hey, what's up guys? This is the TP-Link Deco X68. This is quite possibly the best budget tri-band mesh Wi-Fi 6 system out there. Now that's a lot to say, we'll break that up, I'll explain that. In this video, I'm basically going to unbox this thing, I'm gonna do some speed tests and different configurations, meaning wireless backhaul, wired backhaul. I'm also gonna do some range tests to see how far we actually get with what speeds we get at different distances. And at the end, I'll try to answer the question, is this worth getting, why or why not? Now, let's start off with what a mesh Wi-Fi system is. Well, this thing is really designed to replace your router because these are actually both routers in this particular case. Now, what a mesh Wi-Fi is, when you have two or more devices, at least you have one router, but you can actually have uh, two routers or even more than that but they pretty much work together to create a single network. So what does that mean? So if I connect to my Wi-Fi name, my SSID, let's just say it was called LandPet Wi-Fi. If I take my Wi-Fi device, I connect to it. If I'm closer to this one, it'll automatically connect me to this one. If, I'm, if I walk two or three rooms away and I'm closer to this one, it will automatically connect me to this one. If I'm watching a YouTube video while I'm walking, it should still, go smoothly it's not going to stop and buffer and none of that stuff assuming your internet is fast enough but this pretty pretty much creates a seamless single network now you could also make a guest network and stuff but that's besides the point and it is designed to replace your router granted this specific model also supports access point mode which you can actually use this in conjunction with your router if you wanted to do that as well so it's a Wi-Fi dead zone killers. I mean, all mesh Wi-Fi's are Wi-Fi dead zone killers because that's really what they're designed to do. This one supports up to 150 devices. It is a tri-band. I'll explain that when we uh, move this to the other side. I mean, flip the box to the other side. I'll explain that. It's seamless homing, which is what I explained, and it covers up to 5,500 square feet. Now, take this number with a grain of salt because range really varies based on you know how thick your walls are, if they're concrete, if you live in a building or somewhere where there's a lot of other routers or other wireless interference around, all of that stuff is going to hurt your range. If you live in a place where it's kind of open, not too many things around, you can actually go way farther. So range really varies by you know, just pretty much the environment you're in. It, you know, it really depends on the walls and all that other stuff. So what is a tri-band and how is that different from a dual band? Well, this is a really good representation. I like this image because, and this was the thing, like if I connected to this one and I was walking to this other room, it would automatically connect me to this one and I'd still be good to go. Now, a dual band has two frequencies, a 2.4 gigahertz and a five gigahertz. Those are the frequencies that wireless devices use to connect to routers or mesh Wi-Fi's in general. Now, a dual band has a 2.4 and a 5 gig. A tri band has three. It has a 2.4 gig and two 5 gigahertz. So it has an additional 5 gigahertz band versus a dual band. Now, what is that additional band used for? Well, when you connect wireless devices to your mesh Wi Fi, they're actually sharing network speeds with other wireless devices. So they're also sharing your internet speeds as well. Actually, everything's really sharing your internet speeds, assuming you're using the internet. Um, but wireless devices also share speeds with each other where ethernet does not. So this one actually creates a dedicated backhaul channel. So if these are wirelessly connected to each other, they actually talk to each other on a dedicated band where no other devices are there. So they're actually not sharing a connection with anything else on that specific five gigahertz, which pretty much translates to better uh, wireless speeds for the secondary or third or whatever, how many you have. But basically from the secondary one, you typically get better speeds on a tri-band mesh Wi-Fi than you do on a dual-band mesh Wi-Fi. So, and if you guys have any questions or anything like that, leave in the comment sections below. I do try my best to answer them. And while you're down there, smash that subscribe button and like button if you enjoy these videos. Now, the other cool thing about TP-Link is that it does come with Home Shield, which is additional protection that comes included for the price. 
So that's always a good thing. So you get network protection, parental controls, quality of service, and you get reports and stuff. So that comes included in the price where with some other mesh Wi-Fi's you actually have to pay a subscription fee, not all of them. All right, let's open this up and see what's inside. I'm actually very excited to test this one because this could honestly literally be the best budget mesh Wi-Fi 6 system out there. Now it also depends how fast your internet is and you know where you're placing this, if you're gonna do wired backhaul, if you're gonna do wireless backhaul, all that makes a difference into choosing a mesh Wi-Fi. And I actually did another video where I'll put a link in the description below on kind of like how to choose a router. So I, I pretty much kind of answered those questions. All right, so looking at this, we have two ethernet ports. I'm pretty sure these are two auto sensing, meaning you can hook up one to your modem and then the other one you could, you know, either connect to this one or connect this to a switch, an unmanaged switch. And whatever I'm talking about, I'll put product links in the description below, so be sure to check those out. But, or you could actually hook this up to your computer and they're auto sensing, meaning I can either hook up the first one or the second one and it will automatically detect which one's hooked up to the modem and which one is not. Now, it's not really a big deal, but I mean, I guess it's kind of cool that it does auto sense, but I mean, if you only have two options, you know, it's not that hard to say, okay, this one's for the internet and this one's to expand my network. So if you're doing wireless backhaul, you know, you would put this in uh, one room, hook it up to your modem and stuff. You can hook this up to an unmanaged switch to expand your ethernet ports. And then this one, you pretty much put two or three rooms away and you hook it up to your power and you're good to go. Now, typically with these, you can still use the ethernet ports on the secondary one, even if these are wirelessly talking to each other, which is always a nice thing. If you did wired backhaul, you would basically hook this up to your modem and then you would hook up this second port to one of these two ports and that would actually get you a much better connection or pretty much close to full speeds. And that's what I use, that's what I recommend, but it's not always possible to have ethernet backhaul. Now I will do the speed test like I mentioned earlier for both of these and you guys could see the differences. So yeah, pretty much straightforward power to ethernet ports and good to go there. And it probably comes with power plugs and ethernet cords and stuff. So let's just check that out. So yeah, so power plug. So, and it, this supports 100 to 240 volts, so it should work in a lot of places, regular power plug. And let's see what this guy is, same, same exact thing if you guys wanna see it. Same exact thing, obviously. And it should come with an ethernet cable. Yeah, it does. Typically it comes with one. Um, really right down there okay this side's actually coming across so I'm actually quite interested to see how this is gonna do and this doesn't say if it's cat 5e -E or cat 6 or cat 7 it's probably at least cat 5e -E, which supports gigabit which is all I really need and that's pretty much it later I did want to mention that the deco app which you use to set this up and control this stuff works very well so it makes this thing very easy to set up tells you step by step like connect this disconnect that connect it to each other wait till this blinks and stuff and whatever it tells you it just works so it's very easy to set this up which is fantastic also very easy to use the app because it's just so user friendly gives you a whole bunch of options and stuff and it's just a nice clean interface so i definitely wanted to mention that you also get, again, the home shield with this, which gives you parental controls and some extra security. So it's all included in the subscription. I believe they also offer the home shield pro, which I personally don't need, but I think they do offer that with a subscription. Now I have everything written down. I did all the speed tests, everything, everything's good to go. The other thing worth noting is when you set this up, you can actually just set it up and then change between wired and wireless. You don't actually need to change anything in the app. It automatically detects that. And the good thing about this is, 
again, because I did the speed test and you know wireless backhaul and wired backhaul, when I plugged in the Ethernet, it automatically detected very quickly that it was in wired backhaul. And then when I disconnected it, again, automatically connected right away to this one. So it's just an overall very responsive mesh Wi-Fi, which I really like. Okay, so getting into the speed test, my conditions are that my internet speeds are 480 megabits per second download and 24 megabits per second upload. Now, when you're using a device, through this uh, mesh Wi-Fi system to connect to the internet, you're limited by your internet speeds, what your modem is providing you. So no matter, it doesn't really matter that this can go faster than that. If I'm using my device to access the internet through this, this is limited by my modem. Now, if I have two computers as an example, and they're hooked up to the same network and I'm playing on LAN, local area network, then the internet speeds don't matter and they can actually go faster now you're limited by this mesh Wi-Fi and how fast this can take it. All right, so jumping straight into the speed test, I will also mention that I used my Pixel 5, which is my Wi-Fi 5 device, and my iPhone 12 Pro, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device. Again, this is a um, Wi-Fi 6 compatible mesh Wi-Fi. Now, option one, and I'm gonna skip option two to keep this numbering very consistent with how I do all my other mesh Wi-Fi's and that's because option two is when I have a router and a non-router, but because these are both routers, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna skip option two. But anyways, starting with option one, we have this router by itself and these are both routers. Granted, when you're using them both at the same time, only one of them is acting like a router. And I should also mention, if you're wondering, does this replace your router? And the answer is yes. And, but this specific model can also run an access point mode, which you would have to change in the Deco app. And it actually could run in conjunction with your existing router and you expand your network that way as well. But it's really designed to replace your router. Now, if you do have a, you know, a modem router combo, you could technically run this in access point mode and not touch that, or you can disable the router portion of that modem router combo or put it in bridge mode, which essentially disables it. And then this would basically become your main network. Okay, so option one and is when you use the router by itself, which is now no longer a mesh Wi-Fi because it's one device but that's when you hook up one of these two ethernet ports to your modem and then the other one you could hook up to your computer to some other device or if you need more ethernet ports hook this up to an unmanaged switch and that will expand your ethernet ports and whatever i'm talking about i'll put links in the description below so be sure to check those out okay now this thing with option one connected to your modem with both devices, you know, Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 device, as long as I'm close, I get full speeds, which is what I would expect. Now we jump on to option three, again, skipping option two. Now option three is when you hook these up to each other via ethernet, which is called wired backhaul or ethernet backhaul. Now that lets you get the best possible speeds. Now, if you're wondering, hey, if this is hooked up to an unmanaged switch, can I just go from the unmanaged switch to this? Yes, that would still be considered wired backhaul. So as long as there's a physical ethernet connection that makes it all the way to this one, and I believe it's not longer than 100 meters because I think that's the limit for ethernet be before, the after that, I think it starts slowing down or cuts off or something. Anyways, when I do speed tests on the secondary one, I get full speeds with both devices when they're close. Now with this one, because this is hooked up to your modem via ethernet, whenever you're close to this one, you're always gonna get full speeds, just as a heads up. It's really the secondary one that's acting as the access point. That's the one that's not hooked up to your modem directly. That's the one that I'm doing speed tests on because that's the one that can degrade, which happens in option four, wireless backhaul. Now typically wireless backhaul means you know, hook this up to your modem, you're good to go here. And this one, you plug it in to, you know, connect it to power and stuff, you know, two, two rooms away, something around there. And it creates a connection wirelessly. And so again, when you're closer to this one, you're gonna get full speeds. When you're closer to this one, 
you may not get full speeds. In this case, we got slightly lower than full speeds, maybe a little bit more than slightly lower than full speeds. So I got 372 down and 22 up with the Wi-Fi 6 and 320 down, 22 up with the Wi-Fi 5 device. So there was definitely a drop in performance. Now typically tri-bands do better with wireless backhaul because they have that dedicated band. And this is in general better than dual bands because dual bands would drop in my case from what I've seen in most cases, excluding the Deco X60, which did very well. But typically all the other ones, I've pretty much, they've pretty much dropped around 50 to 60% in performance on the secondary one. So I would typically get some somewhere around like 195 down, something like that around there. Uh, but with this one, I'm getting a lot better than that, but not quite full speeds. Okay, and if you're wondering, okay, if these are wirelessly connected, can I hook these ethernet ports to another device? And the answer is yes. I think I mentioned that earlier, but I hooked this up to my Xbox Series S. I did a uh, speed test on that and I got 372 down and 19 up. So still fairly good speeds. Okay, so now getting to range test again using the same two devices, you know, the Pixel 5, iPhone 12 Pro. At 20 feet, I'm still inside my place. I pretty much get full speeds, just under full speeds. And then at 50 feet, I'm still getting really good speeds. Now that's outside with the front door closed. With the front door open, I can actually go longer and get better speeds. But I close the front door because that's how I do all my other mesh Wi-Fi's. And these are also placed in the same exact location that I've done all my previous mesh Wi-Fi's, uh, at least up until now. So at 50 feet, I'm still getting very usable speeds. At 60 feet, still pretty good. At 70 feet, and you can start seeing actually from 50 feet on, you could start seeing that Wi-Fi 6 is really doing a lot better than Wi-Fi 5. That's really where Wi-Fi 6 shines. The farther away you go, that's when Wi-Fi 6 typically does better. You get better range, better speed, especially, you know, obviously because this also supports Wi-Fi 6. Moving on to 70 feet, still usable. You know, the, the Wi-Fi 5 is definitely starting to suffer at this point. And then at 90 feet, the Wi-Fi 5 is pretty much, pretty much done. And then the Wi-Fi 6 still is kind of usable and didn't quite make it to 100 feet. I could say that realistically, maybe this one to like 92 and 93 feet, maybe even 94 feet, and then it pretty much just stopped working. Again, this is where I live. These numbers may be very different for you. I, if, I take, if I take the same, same mesh Wi-Fi to my parents' house, they can go way farther than I can. Uh, I'm in a much more congested place, so you know, take these numbers with a grain of salt, but these numbers are very consistent with how I did all my other mesh Wi-Fi's, just as a heads up. Okay, now final thoughts. Is this the best budget, keyword budget, tri-band mesh Wi-Fi 6 system out there? I have to say, I have to say yes. And, and there's a little bit of like, mm, should I say yes or, and the reason is, if we look at the pros, range test is very, very good, uh, especially for something of this price. Um, uh, the app itself is really good, the Deco app, you know, very easy to set up, very easy to use, very responsive, so very, very good. I think this looks aesthetically pleasing. I mean, you know, it depends on how you see it, you know. Is this the nicest one that I've seen? Probably not, but it's definitely pretty nice. I do like the way it looks. And speed tests overall are pretty good. They're not amazing, but they're pretty good. Obviously with wired backhaul, you get full speeds. So if you're doing wired backhaul, you don't need to worry about that. But if you're doing wireless backhaul, there will be a bit of a decrease in performance. If your internet speeds are 400 megabits per second and higher, then you're gonna start seeing a decrease in performance. If you have gigabits, and you're thinking about getting this and you don't care about this because even at 372 you can watch YouTube, Netflix, Twitch, all that stuff, you should be fine. But if you really care about speeds, then I would probably avoid this if you have gigabit. I'd probably go maybe for the slightly better ones, um, like maybe the Asus XT8 as an example. And I've done videos on that one as well, or maybe the Eero Pro 6 or the Nekia Orbi and stuff, maybe I'd look at those as well. 
uh, does those typically do a little bit better than this um, but I think overall for the price honestly really considering its price it did really well it also supports a lot of devices but I think in general TP-Link makes pretty good products so I've used their switches in the past and stuff and they've been fine so if you guys enjoyed this video please like and subscribe thank you guys for watching if you guys have questions or comments please leave in the comment sections below I do try my best to answer them and thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one